things that I wanted to be doing. I challenged myself to read more books on subjects that allowed me to see myself in a new light, and I began to build relationships with people that I felt were God-led people that I could give to them and they could give to me. And I also, most importantly, I prayed for God to send the right people into my life and to remove the ones that didn't need to be there. What I started to experience was because of those things were happening and I was truly and genuinely working on me, was people were coming around saying, oh, she thinks she's better than, better than us and she's changed and it was always something negative. But when you're trying to go someplace different and do something different, sometimes you have to remove yourself from certain situations and certain people. Yeah. It all depends on what it is that you want. Yep. One of the things that really does happen, it, it really, really does happen is when you start to do that, you really start to think differently. And even the places you go, the people that you hang around, you start to, that'll start to change and, and different people will start to be drawn towards you. You really have to, it really does start with, with your thoughts because your thoughts become your actions and your actions really does become your life. One of the things that really makes me sad is when I interact with and I see single women really um, wasting their single season because they're in such a hurry to be somebody's Mrs. So-and-so. And they are in that rush because they're believing that if they don't have somebody's last name, then who are they? You are already whole. You need to stop playing it. I need to be with him because if I'm with him, then I'm somebody. You're somebody by yourself. In the season of being single, you need to work on being you in the way that God wants you to be you. Meaning, if you are wanting to go back to school or you are wanting to work on your credit so that you're able to maybe build a house one day. Yeah. Work on all those things that are important to you because once you get married, it's no more you, it's the us. And what if the us that you have, not God connected you to, but you connected you to, Mm -hmm. does not have the ambition or the drive that you do. You just made two people miserable, you and the person that you hooked up with. So what are some dreams that you ladies are wanting to pursue? Is anybody wanting to open a business or go back to school? Nonprofit agencies, what are some of your dreams? For me right now, I want to um, I want to get three books out this year. I want to publish three books this year and get them out there on Amazon to be sold. That's very doable. Have you written your vision to make it plain to actually execute that this year? Oh, yes. I can't wait to read your book. Oh, yeah, I had them. Huh? Is there anything else that you want to get done? Um, let me see. Oh, yeah, I got some house stuff. Like I said, the house stuff, I do want to definitely get to working on it now that I have a um, more financial means to um, work on it. That's, you know, that's my main thing. And my books, my, I would have to say my house is my first thing and my books will come second. 
and I believe you get all of those done this year. I really do. Oh, yes. And the thing about it, too, is that as I'm looking at it, I'm not looking at what I need to do from a scarcity mentality. I'm looking mm-hmm. at it from an abundance mentality. And even when it says to whom much is given, much is required, I know it's going to take work, and I know that I got to get up and do it because if I don't do it, ain't nobody else going to do it for me. And I know that I'm going to have to speak well over, over it and, you know, just like you said, put everything in order so that I can stay focused. Because sometimes when we have even the visions written out, if they're not written in order, you won't be focused on it because you'll be looking here and you'll be looking there and you'll miss a step or two. Yeah, I call that the bobblehead effect. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been a, a victim of that many a time because I have so many different ideas just bouncing around my head mm-hmm. that I focus on this one. And then something else will pop up, and I'm like, I need to work on that, too. And then I'm juggling all these things, and then I get overwhelmed, and stuff gets dropped, and I'm like, I'll get back to it later. And then it's months or so before I realize I was supposed to be finishing that. Yes. Yes. This year I decided to break down my goals into more smaller goals. That's what I decided to do. Um, the last two years, I worked with the much bigger goals, but this year I wanted to break them down into much smaller ones so that I can get them done a lot quicker. And I believe that you'll get it done. I'm a firm believer that anything that you put your mind to, you can you can actually get done. Amen. Many don't know my uh, personal testimony, so I always like to share it because it does motivate and encourage people that if she can come through that, then there's nothing that God can't do for me. When I was about 16, I um, woke up one morning trying to put on my my coat to go out to catch the bus with my brother. And... I had a blood vessel that had bursted on my brain. I was unaware. I just knew I was trying to get my arm in my coat pocket and couldn't pull my, in the sleeve, and I couldn't. So my mom, who normally would not be home at this time, looked at me and saw that I was stumbling and just wasn't right and asked me, what's wrong with you? And I said to her what was in my mind was, I don't know, but she said I found it really um, strange and the words were like garbled. So between her and my grandmother, they got me into her car. She drove me from our house to the hospital that was an hour away from us, which is the best hospital in the area, so that I could get the care I needed. Um, Fast forwarding to after I had a 13-hour surgery that was done to save my life, I had the best doctor on staff. He was male clinic trained and nurses and doctors and just people in general that my mama came in contact with did not understand how I knew how I had received that doctor and he was the best one on staff and exactly what I needed. God lined up everything. So I went through that process of going through that surgery, experiencing that basically going to sleep, what it felt like to me, and waking up and not having the use of one side of my body. And add on top of that, being bald-headed. So I'm a 16-year-old girl who loved her hair, and I had a head full of hair, and it had finally grown shoulder length. And you, I wake up, and it's gone. So that was freakish for me, one thing. And then the other was not being able to move a certain part of my body, and they're trying to explain what's going on to me. So as I'm healing and recovering, God is downloading into me, reminding me of my hopes and my dreams, um, what it is that I'm going to do. So as I'm laying in the bed, now mind you at this time, I'm not able to get up out of the bed, go to the bathroom, um, 
I can't dress myself. I'm doing good to feed myself. All of this is going on. So as I'm laying in the bed, I'm looking and I'm talking to anybody that will listen to me, and I'm telling them, I'm graduating from high school a long time. I'm going to college, and this is the life that I'm going to have. And everybody looked at me and was like, well, we'll worry about that later. I said, no, we're going to worry about that now. That's what's going to happen. So finally, people just like, okay, that's what you're going to do. Because anytime somebody tried to tell me differently, oh, no, this is not going this is not going to be something that does not happen. This is going to happen. So I shared that with you to let you know not only did that happen, but I have two college degrees. And this is not me bragging. This is me just letting you know what God can do. Amen. 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 Because I had that thought, and I just kept speaking it and speaking it and speaking it. I couldn't write that, but my vision was so plain, and I believed it so hard that everything that I did lined up with that. So I shared that with you to let you know when you have a mindset, that is a certain way, there's really nothing that you can't accomplish once you line that up with what you, with God. Because his word clearly tells you to write the vision and make it plain. He tells you that for a reason. Because if you see it in black and white and it's before you at all times, you're like, oh, this is my plan. This is what I need to do. Wow. Amen. I need to kind of talk to you about, is anybody really, like, desiring to get married? And you can be honest. Can you, can you say that again? Does any, is there anybody that is desiring to get married? Or like, or you feel like you're in a rush to get it done, or I'm desiring to get married, but I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. All right. I am one day, but I want the right person because I already got a daughter. Because that's uh-huh. the stuff I got to look at. Make sure, like, okay, this gonna be this man's stepdaughter. Is he gonna be the right person for her also? Right. But I'm hey, man, just not gonna good. up and rush and do it. It does make make a difference when you know that you know that you connect yourself to the right one. Yeah. I asked that because I wanted to uh, share with some, share with you ladies some questions that I had to recently just ask myself. Um, When you are thinking about getting married or you feel like you've got the one and you prayed about it, and maybe you haven't gotten your confirmation yet, or so you waiting for God to let you know one way or the other. Here are some questions, and they are few because I've, I've really been sitting and thinking about this. One of the shed is with you. Is this my purpose, mate? Meaning, is this the one that God sent for me to build a life with, to build a family, to work in his ministry? Are we equally yoked? Did God confirm that this is the season for us to wed? Am I his rib or am I forcing it? Did we invest in our wedding day being beautiful versus planning for a God-ordained marriage? Do we have prayer warriors in our corner for difficult times? Are we connected to married couples that have weathered storms that can be our mentors? Is he or she willing to go through premarital counseling? And this is a big one, lady, because this this one right here affects every aspect of your marriage. Does he understand what being ahead means? Is he willing to listen to God regarding me, us, and the life 
that we are going to build together. Does he manage financial matters? 